I was thinking the other day, you know what? I don't have enough car issues. If you watched last week's video on my new rabbit pickup truck, you'll beg to differ, but I'm sure you'll know what's going to happen. It's going to get engine swapped. And if you like Volkswagen rabbits, check out that video. But I decided the Hellcat's a bit much and it's a little in your face. So I decided to go with something that's not as in your face, more subtle and far, far cheaper. Enter the V10 M5. I've been eyeing one for a long time, but got scared away because they were prone with issues like the Vano system, the rod bearings, SMG transmission, you name it. But the V10 M5 is one of the very few sedans you can get with a V10 engine, especially for cheap money. It's not the best looking car in the world, but have you heard what it sounds like? <laughs> It literally sounds like an F1 car. So I found one on Facebook Marketplace, which is the new Craigslist, except you can see photos of people's kids. What, for five grand for an M5, crank no start? Come on, it's a no brainer. Or is it? It's probably like a battery issue or no gas or something. This seems like an easy enough fix. So I asked him about the rod bearings and he said that they were done by the previous owner. And when I got there, I won't lie, this is not exactly where I was expecting to find a V10 M5. I thought it would be at someone else's house, not in a yard under a tree, but they said they were driving it and a bunch of misfires came up and the car stopped working and it's been sitting for six months. Now I have videos of it driving. I don't know when these were taken, but the car has more mileage now. And this video was probably evidence of the rod bearings prior to failure. So I'm gonna buy the car and hopefully fix it. But first I have to uncover all of the other issues with it. Now keep in mind, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just doing the basics and figuring out things as I go along. So without further ado, let's get this show over with. Rich, oh, you're what too good you for me. Do? You're too good to me. All right, let's engage it. Can you stare fully? Was it locked? Ah, uh, the key's in it. Now it's it's free falling. All right, guys, I almost immediately regret getting this car. There is stuff everywhere on the interior. It reeks and absolutely reeks of cigarettes. If you look, there's a lot of dryer towels everywhere. There's dryer pads in the front, dryer pads in the back, and there's even dryer pads in the front stuffed at a whole bunch of random crevices in the engine bay. That's a desiccant bag right there as well. There's probably several more that I found in this car. Let's see, there's one there too. There's one over there. Clearly there was water intrusion in this car at some point. I think the dryer bags are supposedly to prevent rodents and mice. And the biggest culprit of all, the Home Bright Moisture <laughs> Eliminator with charcoal. So clearly there was an issue before. That's actually a decent amount of water. This was located in the back seat under the front seat in the, of the car. So obviously there was water, but I will have to take apart this interior slightly. Just a little bit, probably just the front and rear seats to inspect underneath the carpet to see if there's any additional water there. Uh, we had the tow hook at the back. We used the forklift uh, to pull this into the garage. And now comes the fun part of getting to work and really figuring out what's wrong with this thing. It needs a really, really good scrub because it smells. There's a seat back protector for the kids. Uh, there were children in this car, which is fine. And I gotta say, considering there were kids in this car, I think there's goldfish there. I will say that the seats actually aren't that bad, all things considered. If you look in this ashtray, yeah, it was used all right. That is, that doesn't look so great. Either way, the interior really isn't that bad. There's no cuts or tears on the inside. If you look, they actually really enjoyed their air fresheners. I'll give you one guess as to what kind of air freshener was there. You already know. So what I wanna do now, the first thing when you get one of these cars, a German, automobile is you want to make sure the battery is fully charged as of right now there is no power going to this car because that battery showed a whopping six volts when we got it now what i have to do is i have to get into the trunk somehow the trunk will not open unfortunately because again there is no battery so i have to see if i could pull down these seats uh 
Okay. Okay, let's see what's in here. All right, so I have to crawl in that hole and pull the emergency safety latch to open the trunk. So I got the trunk open and there's definitely evidence of mold in the back. You could see it in the corners. You could also see some spores forming right on there. Let's see what's inside of this little tool kit. Every BMW needs a tool kit apparently. Um, let's see. That looks pretty clean. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Look at all the tools. This corrosion built up on the screwdrivers anything that's metal so yeah this car has to be gone through for sure uh there's a lot of debris from sitting under a tree for a very long time they did tell me that the car was sitting uh for about six months you have to assume the owners are lying so let's multiply that by two probably been a year or so so let's see what the battery is here look at all oh, that's so gross look at all this what is that okay all right either way I'm gonna undo this battery now and put it on the charger. One here. Let's pull this thing out and see. Yeah. This was made, it's not even the good one. This is the silver. I think there's a platinum version too. That's supposed to be a lot better, but it is what it is. This looks like it was made in 2020. So it's not really that old. So I'm gonna put this in the charger so I get some life out of it. Here's our battery collection. We have various batteries just in case we get a vehicle in whose battery does not work. I should have like my own shelf, kind of like um, AutoZone or something like that, but it's on the charger right now. We'll let you know how it goes. In about 24 hours guys and it looks like this battery is fully charged now i'm going to take this battery that was found in the car and try to fire it up and see what happens all right getting some lights there's a first Never heard that sound before. What is that sound? Who knows? Ooh, red interior lighting. Not my style. But let's see what it says. Get the key. Where's the key? There it is. Okay. It's in. Get some power. Okay, that works. All right, wish me luck. Okay, let's see. Brake pads are worn to the minimum thickness. Have the pads placed. Faulty and passenger restraint system. Continue to wear the safety belt. Oh, the battery couldn't handle it again. Huh. Yeah, now the battery's dead. Let's see what codes it throws. All right, so there's quite a few faults here. <laughs> and none of these other things would prevent it from starting. Headlamp and AC system. That wouldn't cause any issues, so that's weird.
So one thing about this BMW is what most people know at BMWs is the repair element. This car is still able to be diagnosed if you have the right tools because today's trending issue is as we've seen in the past is end user support or control is becoming harder to come by. And we're not alone in this fight for the right to repair. As many know, in the early days, we built computers that we controlled things with. Now our computers are controlling us. Does this sound like a movie plot to you? Too many companies are making things seem a bit unnecessary. So this is a call for all the programmers out there working on an open source project that could disrupt the big tech monopolies. Fudo is now accepting applications for its Summer Fellows program, and you can receive a grant to be paid to work exclusively on your project. If you're working on a change and have an open source project or plan to develop an honest business model that doesn't end up selling people's data and not wanting to sell out the Tesla bot or Apple, then you can get up to $80,000 in grant cash funding, housing in Austin, and cool new tech hub and access to a growing tech community. If all this sounds like something that you're interested in, it's recommended that you click on the link in the description box below to learn more and help prevent tech Armageddon. Now that I have the BMW on the ground, what I want to do is this. I want to verify that it's actually getting fuel. So I get crank, no start conditions. What I'm going to end up doing, pop off the top of the intake, take the fuel rail off, crank it, and see if I'm getting fuel out of the injectors. I think that's one of the best places to look. The other issue that I'm getting is I'm getting a low fuel error message. What I'm going to do after I finish taking the intake off, I'm going to get some fuel, maybe three to five gallons worth of gas, and try cranking it again to see if that changes anything. So yeah, we were all gung-ho about, <laughs> about taking this intake off. Then we realized something. I thought it would be as simple as uh, undoing these two clamps and maybe some hose clamps in the background on either side. But it actually turns out that this is a lot more difficult and involved than we thought. I thought it was like a simple pop-up thing. Unfortunately, if you look way back here, there are these hose clamps that are really far in the back underneath here that you have to get to. So you need a very long flathead or potentially some kind of extension to get to them. They are, I don't want to say they're impossible to get to, <clears throat> but they're not easy. Thankfully, BMW went ahead and they marked the location of those, but I'll tell you, man, I mean, I'm already having a bad time and this is something as simple as an intake manifold to remove. This is actually kind of crazy, but uh, we'll keep plugging away at it. You're probably better off taking the fucking engine out of the car. For an intake? We have to get access to the uh, individual throttle bodies. This car has 10 individual throttle bodies, which is why people think they sound so good because you hear the melody of each one. And these are a complete pain in the ass to get to. Unfortunately, what you have to do is you have to pop the intakes off, pop the side intakes off, and you have to finagle away with an extension and a swivel head to get to each one of those and pray that they haven't been removed already before because if they were tilted by any different angle, if the head is facing in instead of out, you literally cannot take this thing out. So that's what we're working on now. It's a pain in the ass. We're at hour number like, I don't know, three or something like that. But uh, this is it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not done crying yet. So uh, after we take these off, uh, I want to pop the fuel rail off crank it again to see if fuel is coming out of the injectors because I think it might be a fuel pump issue and I think doing this is easier than actually popping the fuel pump out, which it, who knows? I don't know. I don't even know at this point. We might just sell this car back to the previous owner because he actually asked about it. The previous owner sent me a message asking if we found the issue with the car and we did not. So after this, I'm going to make him an offer for him to buy it back from us for about half of what I paid for it in the first place. So he made you know, some money off. Someone told me not to get in the BMW too. And I, I just didn't, I didn't listen. What is that? I didn't listen. Wait, what's that? Attention high voltage. What's going on here? I'm talking about the dryer sheet. What's, what's this? No oh, what's happening? That's the, uh, I think that's the transmission failing. So we're, we're finding these dryer sheets everywhere, which means there was evidence of, I think dryer sheets are supposed to keep mice away. Keep mice away. So there was a mouse problem with this car. I don't... Some silica packs around here too. There's silica packs in here too. Oh, right here, ready? Yeah, I thought it was candy. This is not candy. Yeah. Okay. I think I got it now. 
Okay, this definitely isn't helping. I don't know what happened here, but that wasn't being properly sealed. So when I put that back on top, I have to make sure that, oh, they definitely didn't seal that right. Holy smokes. So there was excess air uh, leaking into this one for sure. So I have to make sure that this entire lip is covering the throttle body. But back here, nothing really crazy to see. Uh, it doesn't look like it's too bad back here. Granted, I have no idea what I'm looking at, what I'm looking for. So these are about half the bank of fuel injectors. There's five here. It looks like this is, little tab is broken off. So I might end up replacing all five of these. But if you look, the tips look a little bit dirty. That's kind of normal considering it's been sticking in the engine for well over 100,000 miles. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna block these off so fuel doesn't spray anywhere. I'm gonna record this and crank it to see if fuel is spraying down into the cylinders, see if this thing would actually wants to start in the first place. Okay, so the car isn't getting fuel pressure at all. What I wanna do now is I wanna give a quick vacuum to the interior of this car. It smells absolutely disgusting. I know you guys can't smell it, but it is not a very good smelling car in the least bit. There's a lot of crumbs and just overall dirt and crud and all kinds of stuff in this. I have to pop off this rear cushion to get under this, this seat bench to get to the fuel pump anyways. So I'm gonna pop that off, maybe wipe down the back a little bit so my hands aren't always so oily when I touch things. Like literally there's oil in these seats. So I'm gonna give a quick clean. Okay, that didn't really do all that much because again, these seats are pretty well stained. So what I'm gonna do now is pop the seat cushion up and just see how bad it is underneath the seats. Oh, these are, oh, look at this mold back here. Oh, geez, Louise. That's mold, all right. That's why I felt so sick being in this car. Oh, geez, man. Uh, that's pretty disgusting. So let's see what I got over here. Oh, that's just stuck. I thought these were heated seats. I thought it was the heated seat elements. Ugh. Ah. What is that? Oh boy. Yeah, that's all mold back there. That's, that's mold. Yeah, time to get the gloves on. So you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a second, Richard. Why didn't you fill it with gas first to see if gas was the issue? Well, it still has 18 miles of range, which means it still has one to two gallons, which means it still should fire up. I didn't do it because if I filled it up with gas, then I'd have a much harder time getting access to the fuel filter on that side and the fuel pump, which is on this side. So I want to take a closer look at these first before I decided to fill up with gasoline. So you see, I have a closer look at this. This is actually pretty disgusting. Look at this. I don't know what's going on there, but there's definitely mold growing. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. There's a food pick. Oh gosh, man. What the heck am I doing sometimes, man? What the hell am I doing? The things we do for these cheap cars, they're never cheap. Uh, my thumb is wet. This is still actively wet. What the? F There's more water that's soaking wet. There's more water coming from there. Ah. So this, is, this whole thing is just soaking wet and it's disgusting. Look at this. Oh my gosh. See, this is the reason why they had those desiccant bags everywhere is because there was water getting into the interior they couldn't understand where that musty smell was coming from, so they put those, this cup into it. So they put this moisture eliminator into it, which caught a bunch of water, because they didn't figure out where it was coming from. So uh, this is being thrown away. That's why I cut it out of the vehicle. This has literally no business being in a vehicle whatsoever. So this will be thrown away. There were kids sitting in the back seat of this. If you have asthma issues, this definitely didn't help. This is soaking wet and moldy is even more black mold in the back. Look at that. This is just wild. I hate to keep focusing on this, but man, look at that. 
Look at that. People actually sat back there, which is wild to me. Worst case, I'll probably end up cutting this out. Uh, I'm not really sure how to, how to handle this, but uh, I believe this is a non-M seat, so I think any black rear cushion should fit. This doesn't seem to have anything special in it. It doesn't have the seat heater modules in it, uh, and there's no seat heater on this model in general, because look right here. Usually the seat heaters go back there. There are no seat heaters in this, but man, this is amazing. So I'm gonna clean this out. I'm gonna gingerly remove this mouth pick and uh, clean the back of this place up. Some white spots back here. I wasn't sure what it was. Cause I just wanna get a feel for what I'm sitting in to help make this car smell better. Let's see. Getting the cracks nice and good. Oh yeah. The second I stuck my fingers in the cracks, it was that brown. So it's supposed to, you can't even tell. It's supposed to look like this. It looks like that. So these seats are, whew, they need some help back here, man. This car needs some milk. Okay, so I was able to take out the back seats. That wasn't too bad. The seats were not wet, but look at this one thing. I'm gonna show you right here. Fine, fine, mold, mold, mold. Tons of mold in the seats, on the seat belts too. This goes into this cavity right back here. So what that tells me is there's even more water back there for some reason. When I go into the front, another little fun tidbit. This looks like it's also getting water down there as well. Look at that. It's actually damp down there. So what I wanna do, uh, it looks like this is going to turn into one of those things where I don't really like mold that much. So I'm going to pull the front seats forward, pull them out, remove all the carpeting and kind of start to do a really long and tedious clean up of the interior of this car. I was wondering why it smelled so bad. Now I 100% know. So let's take this interior out. Okay, so we got the carpet out and like we thought on this side, it's completely wet. Even the sub on this side has a little mold on it. I still think that's functional, but we're gonna do a quick test of it. This side is pretty clean. Uh, there's some standing in the rear corner. I'm gonna get some spray nine and definitely clean the bottom of this car as much as I can. But uh, that's the reason why there are so many silica packets everywhere. They try to get rid of the moisture, not to mention this damp rid box that they had. That's a clear indication as to what was going on, but this actually captured a lot of fluid. I know they had a few of these in the car already. Uh, let's check out the carpet now. <sighs> the carpet, yeah, this is where most of the moisture was. It's still a little bit damp. What I'm gonna do with this, I might try to restore this. I'll get some spray nine again, squeeze it out, get as much moisture out of it as we can and to clear up this browning on that side. But uh, we definitely found the problem. There is a ton of water on the passenger side. Now we're gonna see where it's coming from. Okay, I have the sunroof open right now. I have the entire interior taken apart. There's still some water residue down there. Uh, I'm gonna get a bottle of Poland Spring, fill half on this side and half on the this side just to verify that the, uh, the drains are working properly. Thank you yeah. very much, John. All right, so I'm gonna do half on this side. Ready?
No, it's leaking on this side, Joe. Really? Right here. You see water right there. Ah. Oh, whoa, 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 what the? <laughs> look at, look, what the? Both. This is why, this is why you should never park your car and leave your sunroof open, people. All right. Let's get this drain cleared. So we're gonna put this in here. We have this connected to our, our air gun over in the corner. And we have an extension attached to the uh, the sunroof drain that goes all the way to the back of the car. We wanna push this through and see what happens. Quick little burst so you don't blow it. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, there we go. That's clear now. All right, let's see. Yeah, that means. Give me a second. Let me try this. Do the test. I'm gonna do a test, real quick test. There you go. That was no effort. No effort? No effort. When I did it the first time, it took a while. Yeah. So you know what this means? Should we do the other side too? Ah. All right, do it one more time, John. Go ahead. So right now, John, he's giving himself an an aneurysm. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, He's blown, so look at that. So he blew into that, and there's only a couple drops coming out. It shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that hard to do. So, uh, John, why don't you do it like six more times? Why? You were trying to kill me, Rich? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. And I'll force it through. Oh, wow. Well, you know it's clogged because it popped right the hell back out. Exactly. So ready one more time. I'm going to give a quick blast. Let me uh, pinch it off so you know, it doesn't fall back out. All right. Give it a quick little burst. Ready? Quick burst. Go for it. Okay. Wow. That's really clogged, this one. Yep. So now you got to hold both ends. I'm ready? Go for it. Quick blast. Ready? I've never. That one's clogged, clogged. Uh, yeah, I've been doing sunroofs for a long time, dude. I've never seen one clogged. It won't even force, force, this, they won't even fix this, it. This bad. All right, let it out. That might Reach be out right now. This is a very scientific way of doing it. Mm hmm. Yes. There it is. Way easy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Much better. A lot better. Good. Okay, so I decided to do another experiment. Nothing was coming out of the injectors, only a tiny drop. The second try, I got nothing. So I assumed it was a fuel pump issue. So I popped one injector out, and then this happened. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. The fuel pump is clearly working, but the injectors are not firing. Interesting. Anyways, anyone with any E60 experience, let me know. Otherwise, I'll be here pumping away. I will see you guys next week.